Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nails continuing our discussion about bleeding and coagulation disorders. There is a playlist on my channel called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders. In the previous video, I've talked about petechiae. Today, I'll talk about purpura. And in the next video, I'll talk about, guess what, ecchymosis. With that being said, now let's get started. The most common cause of petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis probably thrombocytopenia. And true thrombocytopenia has many causes as we have discussed before. Thrombocytopenia can lead to superficial bleeding, which could be either skin or mucosal bleeding. Skin can be petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis, and mucosal including all of these, but never hemarthrosis, never late re bleeding. These are signs and symptoms of secondary hemostasis defects, such as hemophilia. Petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis. Let's talk about similarities first, then the differences. All of them are subcutaneous hematoma. One condition can lead to all of them. They have the same underlying mechanism, which is a disruption in the vessel wall, platelet, or coagulation. Causes of petechiae, purpura, or ecchymosis. Thrombocytopenia. Why? Disruption in primary hemostasis. Trauma. Why? Disruption in the vessel wall. Purpura is the in-between. Medium. 3 mm to 1 cm. You can write it like this. 0.3 cm to 1 cm. So the same thing. Remember your math. So, causes of purpura, same causes of petechiae, so thrombocytopenia, thrombasthenia, bone marrow failure, coagulation factor defect, plus trauma, vasculitis, especially the palpable purpura, and amyloidosis, especially the systemic generalized amyloidosis. Two videos earlier, I have asked you a question. Mention three causes of palpable purpura. Here are three. Henoxonian purpura, which is the most common vasculitis in children, hepatitis C, and cryoglobulinemia. There are many other causes, and we will discuss this soon. Purpura, definition, subcutaneous hematoma, from 0.3 all the way up to 1 centimeter. It's bigger than petechiae, yet smaller than ecchymosis. Due to extravasation, I love this word, of red blood cells from the intravascular space to the dermis. Because as you know, your body compartments are the intracellular and the extracellular. The extracellular is what's in the plasma or what's within the blood vessel and what's outside called the interstitial space. Purpura is nothing but the extravasation of red blood cells from within the blood vessel to the outside world, the interstitial space, specifically the dermis. Therefore, purpura do not blanch on pressure. Why? Because these are red blood cells stuck in the dermis. No matter how hard you press on them, they're not going to escape. Now, this is different from some fluid, okay? Like when you have, when like an insect or a bee bites you, okay? You have some fluid. So, this is some fluid. Okay, when you press on the fluid caused by an insect bite, it's blanchable. Why? It's just some fluid, some plasma. It's going to go back to the blood vessel. Okay, and when you release your hands, it's going to come back. It's the same thing. Purpura do not blanch. However, allergic reactions do blanch. Why? Because the former are red blood cells. The latter is just some plasma. You can get my Perfect Snails Ultimate Notebook plus 20 lymphoma case plus 25 bleeding cases at patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Please hurry up because the price is going to go up. So let's divide those lesions into those who blanch on pressure and those who does not blanch with pressure. Blanch, any lesion caused by localized vasodilation. Why? Because here is the blood vessel. When vasodilation happens, you have like a vessel. You can press on the vessel, it's not a problem. And then if it's a vasodilation, some of the fluid here can go extravasates and forming like an elevation on your skin. You press on it, it's a freaking fluid, it's gonna go back, so it's blanchable. Such as insect bites, IgE, mast cells, type 1 hypersensitive reaction kind of stuff, or inflammation, neutrophils and pus cells. On the other hand, purpura does not blanch. Why? Because the red blood cells are stuck within the dermis. You cannot just press on them, they are not gonna obey. They are stuck there, baby. They do not blanch. We divide purpura, or petechia for that matter, into palpable or non-palpable. Palpable, most common causes, vasculitis. Never, ever, ever forget that. Palpable purpura, vasculitis. And I gave you three examples earlier. Hinoxalian purpura, hepatitis C, and cryoglobinemia. You can add polyarthritis nodosa. 
also emboli such as Rocky Mountain Spot Fever with the famous Rickettsia, acute meningococcemia with the famous Neisseria meningitis, and gonococcemia with the famous Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay, those are palpable, which means when you feel the skin of the patient, you feel an actual elevation and it's palpable. It's there, it's tough. And you have the non-palpable, localized or generalized. So palpables are probably like this. There is an actual elevation in the skin and it's hard, so you can't like push it and you can feel like an elevation like this. Non-palpable, it's just a flat lesion. Yes, it looks blue or purple, but it's flat. It's non-palpable. If you close your eyes and feel the patient, you're not going to feel anything. But if you look, it's purple. Got you the idea? Okay. Localized or generalized? Localized due to a primary cutaneous disorder. Local trauma. Capillaritis. Actinic purpura due to the sun. Iatrogenic purpura. Drugs such as glucocorticoids. Lividoid vasculopathy. Whatever the flip that means. Generalized defect in clotting or coagulation mechanisms, such as thrombocytopenia, which is a defect in primary hemostasis, hemophilia, which is a defect in secondary hemostasis, defect in the vessel wall, such as amyloidosis, vitamin C deficiency, or scurvy, collagen defect, also known as Ehlers Danlos syndrome. Pro tip do not confuse palpable with blanchable, because all purpura are non blanchable, yet some of them are palpable, others are non palpable. Palpable and blanchable are two different things. Confusing palpable and blanchable is like confusing palpation and percussion. One has nothing to do with the other. But I use my fingers to palpate and to percuss. Yes, and you also use your finger to curse other people. What kind of argument is that? Be a nice person. Don't curse. And don't confuse palpation with percussion. And don't confuse palpable with blanchable. Some medical pearls. Uremia can cause platelet dysfunction. This is a primary hemostasis defect, leading to generalized non-palpable purpura. Thrombocytopenia starts as petechiae in the distal aspect of the lower limb. Vitamin C deficiency, also known as scurvy, sorry, before scurvy, vitamin C is a cofactor for the enzyme called lysyl hydroxylase. Lysyl hydroxylase is going to be involved in, guess what? Hydroxylation from pro-collagen into triple helix pro-collagen. Then you have tropo-collagen, collagen fibrils, collagen fibers, and they form the wall of your nice blood vessel. This is normal. In cases of scurvy, you don't have vitamin C. It's a vitamin C deficiency. Therefore, you don't have the cofactor for the lysyl hydroxylase. You don't have hydroxylation of the pro-collagen. The pro-collagen is going to be pro. It's a premature collagen. You're never going to have strong collagen fibers what will happen to your blood vessel wall it's gonna start to bleed that's why scurvy is one of the causes of purpura i've told you that the color of purpura is kind of blue purple something like that but it can also be bright red really yes in case of capillaritis you have perivascular lymphocytic inflammation leading to a red blood cell Extravasation, those are bright red petechiae scattered within yellow to brown patches like these. Why yellow to brown? This is hemosiderin, baby. Because as you know, your blood contains red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has heme and globin. Heme has iron, siderin, and protoporphyrin. It's the iron. It's the hemosiderin that causes this yellow-brown discoloration. Quiz time. How to differentiate between solar purpura caused by the sun and steroid purpura caused by glucocorticoids? Using the physical exam only. Please let me know the answer down below in the comment section and let's see who's gonna get it first. There is a playlist on my channel called Medical Jokes. There is another playlist called Medical Mnemonics. And there is a website, there is a company, it's not me, called Picmonic. Medical Mnemonics. It's amazing. It's better than video. It's kind of an animation. So see the link in the description for a great deal. They are not a sponsor of this video. Thank you for watching. Please smash like and share. Subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. All of these platforms. Download my notes and my cases at patreon.com slash medicosis. 
and they are available for direct download and they are yours forever. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfect Nellos, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy and study hard.